Villa Windsor, Chateau Le Bois, was the Parisian abode of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor from 1953 until they died in 1972 and 1986, respectively. This building is located in the Bois de Boulogne near Neuilly-sur-Seine. Originally known as the Chateau de Madrid, the villa's story began in the 19th century, though it gained its most notable identity in the latter half of the 20th century when it became associated with the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. After reigning for less than a year, King Edward VIII, now the Duke of Windsor, became the first English monarch to abdicate the throne in 1936. The reason for this dramatic moment in royal history was that he was determined to marry American Wallace Simpson, who had been divorced twice. During World War II, the British government sent the former king to the Bahamas, where he served as governor from 1942 to 1945. As a result, the couple moved into the mansion in 1953, spending the best years of their lives here apart from traveling worldwide. Villa Windsor was originally built for politicians, hoteliers, and the mayor of the 16th arrondissement, Henri Lillaz, and his wife, May Beck, in 1929. Situated along the northern perimeter of Bois de Boulogne, the building was designed by Roger Bouvard in the Louis XV and Louis XVI styles, to replace earlier mansions built in 1858 on the orders of Napoleon III. The buildings at Champ d'Entraînement were originally summer houses donated to parks and gardens department officials, who were busy developing Bois de Boulogne following the example of London's Hyde Park. All the homes in this part of the city still belong to the city of Paris, and for many years, they were rented to high-ranking officials. Henri Lillaz came to an agreement with the city whereby he leased numbers 4 and 6 along the Champ d'Entraînement route and could demolish both houses to create one property, subject to certain conditions, for example, he must have spent at least 1 million francs, and the construction of a new home should take more than 24 months. The building also had to have a minimum area of 1,150 square pounds and be no more than 40 feet in height. During World War II, the mansion was handed over to the Nazis and became home to Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring, who used it as a base to add to his already massive collection of looted art. After the city's liberation in 1944, the French government confiscated the house and French President Charles de Gaulle lived there for several years before moving to nearby Bagatelle Castle. He chose this building, but the president's wife, Yvonne, found it too grandiose for her taste and never felt comfortable there, knowing that the last person to live in the mansion was Goering. How did the estate end up in the hands of the Windsors? The Duke of Windsor, formerly King Edward VIII of the United Kingdom, famously abdicated the throne in December 1936 to marry Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee. This act of choosing love over duty caused a scandal that reverberated through the British monarchy and the world. The couple was given the titles of Duke and Duchess of Windsor by Edward's brother and successor, King George VI. After their scandalous wedding at the Chateau de Condé, the couple remained in France, where they were granted tax-free status and lived in numerous houses, which were lavishly decorated at great expense. Still, after the outbreak of war, they moved to the Bahamas. Upon their return, the couple led a nomadic life between France and the United States, staying in hotels or with friends. In 1952, the British government gave them money to buy the Moulin de la Tuilerie, south of Versailles, in keeping with the Duke's wishes for his garden. It wasn't until the following year, 1953, that the Duchess came across the luxurious 14-room, 
12,700 SQFT Chateau Le Bois Limestone Mansion, explicitly designed for grand entertainment. Living room ceilings are 15 feet high, and the property is surrounded by 2.7 acres of lush gardens with a detached garage and tall wrought iron fence. The French government offered the Dukes a 50-year lease on the house for pound 50 a year without paying any taxes. The interiors of Villa Windsor were the epitome of opulence and were a testament to the Duke and Duchess's love for the finer things in life. Renowned interior designers and artists contributed to its lavish decor, which included precious antiques, exquisite paintings, and bespoke furniture. The estate was not just a home, but a museum of their royal past and their enduring influence on high society. The Duchess soon left her mark on the building with Stéphane Boudin, the legendary interior designer who later helped Jackie Kennedy design some of the rooms in the White House. He also assisted the Duke and Duchess with the renovation of their home in the Paris suburb Moulin de la Tuilerie. At Villa Windsor, Boudin created a whirlpool of English and French aristocratic styles. The mansion has a luxurious front entrance. Columns are located on both sides of the main door. The entrance hall is decorated with frescoes, tapestries, and a Japanese screen, which, according to rumors, were presented to the couple by Emperor Hirohito. The foyer leads to the dining room, living room, and library. Most of the couple's memorable parties took place here. In the library, above the red marble fireplace, we can see a superb portrait of the Duchess, painted by the artist Gerald Rockhurst. Also in this room is a fantastic portrait of the Duke of Windsor on horseback, created by Sir Alfred Munnings. The Great Salon was created in the style of Amalienborg, the home of the Danish royal family in Copenhagen. Its interior is decorated in muted colors with gold and red accents. There is antique furniture and an impressively sized Aubusson rug in pale blue and gold, designed to match the ostrich feather pattern embroidered with silver thread. The marble staircase in the foyer leads to the Windsor's private chambers. Between the two rooms, there is a comfortable living room. The third floor was reserved for servants and storage. The most striking detail in the Duchess of Windsor's bedroom is an exciting contrast with the blue upholstery and turquoise walls, the color of which the apartment owner called Wallace Blue. As for the Duke of Windsor's room, it is filled with photographs of his beloved. Above his bed hangs a velvet drapery featuring the fleur-de-lis and the royal coat of arms and the royal ER symbol can be seen on the bedspread. The Windsors held their famous dinner parties in such luxurious surroundings, inviting Marlene Dietrich, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, Aristotle Onassis, and other celebrities. What happened to Villa Windsor after the death of the Duke and Duchess? After the death of the Duchess in 1986, the house returned to the ownership of the city of Paris. In the same year, Egyptian businessman Mohammed al fayed who lived in London and owned the British department store Harrods, signed a 50-year lease for the villa. The rent was 1 million francs per year, provided the temporary owner would spend 30 million francs on restoring the mansion. Mohammed al fayed kept his word and carefully renovated the villa, for which he received the title of Officier in the Légion d'Honneur in 1989. The restoration was curated by the Duke's former valet, Sidney Johnson. In July 1997, al fayed announced that an auction would be held in New York to sell the property of the Duke and Wallace Simpson from the villa. He purchased approximately $4.5 million worth of items from the house's primary beneficiary, the Pasteur Institute. 
things that were put up for sale, were of value to the royal family, including the table at which Edward announced that he wanted to abdicate the throne, a massive collection of photographs, and a doll given to the Duke by his mother, Queen Mary. After the tragic death of Dodie and Diana in an accident, it was decided to postpone the auction, so it took place only at the beginning of 1998. In total, more than 40,000 items were put up for auction, which were divided into 3,200 lots. All proceeds from sales went to Dodi Fayed's charitable organization and to causes related to Diana. It is believed that most of the items at the auction were purchased by representatives of the royal family, although there is no official confirmation. In 2019, Mohamed Al-Fayed decided to return Villa Windsor to the city of Paris. In the spring of 2023, Alberic de Montgolfier, head of the charity foundation Mansa, told reporters that the city council had leased the dilapidated building to his organization for 32 years. The foundation director said the house had never been open to the public. The organization was partially entrusted with the house's restoration because it had previously successfully restored the Chateau de Bagatelle near Villa Windsor in Bois de Boulogne. Work on the villa will last more than a year, including installing an innovative heating system and a range of works to ensure that the building complies with modern health and safety standards. They plan to install a cafe and a small restaurant on the territory. Entrance to the mansion will be free. In addition to the museum with a permanent exhibition that details the house's history, the renovated premises will host various special events. Today, Villa Windsor stands as a silent witness to the complex and controversial love story of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. It remains a symbol of their legacy, a blend of royal heritage and personal defiance. The villa is not typically open to the public, preserving its mystique and continuing to fascinate historians, royal watchers, and the general public alike with its rich and tumultuous history. After taking a look at Villa Windsor, what are your thoughts? Would you like to visit this villa? If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and catch you in the upcoming video.